Hello, it is Thursday, July 7th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Thursday puzzle today, which means some kind of intricately themed puzzle, perhaps. And I'm off to a very late start this morning because my internet at home has been completely down. I was able to, um, by repeatedly trying to reload the New York Times crossword page, I seem to catch a little blip of internet. It's already gone again. So hopefully that won't prevent me from solving the puzzle. Um, it will prevent me from uploading it. So I don't know when this is going to go up today. I haven't really thought about that until just now. Anyway, I have to say it's really quite a day for my internet to be out given the news situation here in the UK. So let's, um, I, for the time being, I'm going to solve a crossword. I'm going to hope that I can, uh, I can do that without any interruption. It should be okay since the page is already loaded. And so this, uh, I don't know, unstable perhaps edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Joe Percy, Joseph Schwalbach, and as always, the inestimable hood monster the invaluable Timothy Mark, the inimitable Connor O'Neill, and the infallible Cynthia Toms. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. By directly contributing to this channel, they have helped make it a sustainable part of my daily work. And for that, I am very appreciative. So thank you to them. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. For doing so, you get access to the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So head over to patreon.com slash daily solve if you're interested in learning about that and potentially contributing yourself for a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency. And uh, you can subscribe to the channel as well and join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There are uh, there's links to that in the description field underneath the video. And of course, you can subscribe just by pressing the subscribe button. You don't need a link for that. So let's start solving. This is a Thursday puzzle, as I said, so we'll have some sort of interesting theme. It was uh, constructed by Philip Wolf, and I believe, I can't double check because of my internet situation, but I believe this is a debut puzzle for Philip Wolf. So let's get on to solving. We'll play. And opening in a magic act. Is this one of those things that has, it's one of those, oh, there's that film... The Prestige by Christopher Nolan that had the, I mean, I know that this doesn't derive from that film, but I think that's when many of us learned the phrases of, that represent the phases of a magic act, but I don't remember. Is it the turn? No, that's the turn wouldn't be the first one, would it? It's just four letters, which is why I thought of it. Anyway, let's keep going. Some nasty repartee. Mm, I don't know, barbs maybe? Actor Thornton. Oh, maybe it is Barb's. Billy Bob Thornton is an actor, and so perhaps it is Barb's. Let's like let's check the crosses here. Lead into how or who, anyhow, or any who, one might say a bit more jocularly. Straight line. Straight line. Why don't I see what that is? And a ring bearer. Ring bearer. A custom. To accustom yourself to something is to inure yourself to it. To become inured, to become accustomed. So a straight line is a rule, right? Okay. As in straight lined paper, ruled paper, that sort of thing. Or a straight rule. Okay. Ring bearer. What is that? Why don't I see what it is? Cuts off is severs, perhaps? <laughs> a word that was apparently very unusual for me to imagine on a recent Wordle solve. Locale for a talking snake would be Eden, I suppose, in the biblical story of the Garden of Eden. Oh, a ring bearer is a bride, I guess. Must be. Um, I was thinking of I was thinking of it, and I'm sure this was intentional misdirection, as the person who brings the ring to the bride and groom. But uh, no, not in this case. Okay, what is this? This looks interesting. 1967 James Bond film. You only live once. Or is it you only live twice? Isn't the idea that it's sort of a pun and you only live twice? Maybe, maybe that a... I can't tell if I just can't remember the name of the James Bond film or if I'm encountering the theme and the point of it is that I'm changing twice to once. I don't know if it's... Is it me or is it the theme? I don't know. 
Let's see. What have we not seen yet? Yawn for wanting guests to leave. A, a signal, I guess. Um, have we looked at these down yet? I don't think so. Hell to Dante. The abyss. Oven option is broil or grill here in the UK. It might make... Uh, that's when you get the direct heat from above. It might make you blush. Rouge, perhaps. Um, put some rouge on your cheeks to give that blushed uh, look. Make amends for. Atone... Oh, sorry. Made amends for. Atoned for. There we go. Oh, oh I see. Opening in a magic act. It's simply abra. As in abracadabra. The opening to the... I don't know. Is it a spell or the magical word? Abracadabra? Uh, I made that. I was trying to make that much more complicated than it needed to be, but I'm not surprised that I didn't jump straight to Abra. Ready to retire, say, is sleepy, ready to retire and go to sleep. Part of the body covered by a mullet. A mullet is, is a hairstyle that's short in the front, but long in the back, so it covers your nape, nape of your neck. Bankruptcy cause could be your debts, I suppose. And passes is enacts a law, for instance. Uh, sister of Thalia and Arania. Is it Arato? It's definitely a Greek myth thing. Are, the, are these muses? Who are these people? I can't quite remember. Blank reform, political issue, tort reform. Tort has come up quite a few times, actually, recently in the crossword. It's interesting. It's popped up a handful of times, just in the past few weeks, I think. Anyway, re refers to, um, deals with kind of legal harm done. And so tort reform would, would deal, deal around kind of changing, I suppose, the, I don't know, thresholds or definitions around, around, uh, how tort is interpreted and applied. Takes to task. If you take someone to task, you scold them. And fly fishers, fly fishers catch could be a trout. I suppose trout is one of the fish you catch when fly fishing. Yo blank, yo dude, you could say. And rivers, river on which Greek deities swore their oaths, must be the river Styx, um, passing through Hades or the abyss. In a, in a different uh, theological tradition, I suppose. Census datum would be sex, I suppose. That would be one of the things you would um, tabulate in a census. Randomized clinical, clinical cl ah, sorry, randomized clinical trial. Oh, a, a double blind study. So it's going to be, okay, so I think this is going, we are going to be changing the number. So not double, perhaps a, tw a tw I mean, single doesn't fit. Uh, thrice blind? I don't know, actually. I don't really see what it is. I, d I mean, a double blind study would be the, the, the ordinary phrase. So what are we doing to it? I'm not sure. Ankle bones. Uh, tally? Plural, I guess, a plural, not I guess, definitely the plural of talus. And some amateur theater productions. Does it end with an S? Ferret lookalike. A stoat. I'm trying to think of what could start with an S and would look like a ferret, and a stoat probably would. An impertinent one. Could be a snot. You're, you're being a real snot. You're being very impertinent. Kentucky blank, sister race of the Kentucky Derby. Oh, interesting. The Kentucky Derby was referenced this week already in the crossword. Kentucky oats, maybe? Oats is something that oats are associated with horses, maybe? Some amateur theater productions are... Oh, Kentucky oaks, maybe. Maybe it has something to do with oats. Skits, because I was thinking skits could be am amateur theater productions. So Kentucky Oaks, I guess. I don't know what that is, but it must be the sister race of the Kentucky Derby. That's just my guess. I'm taking a guess at that, about that. Langston Hughes poem. I too. Kind of rings a bell. Stupid incompetent ones. Doofuses, I guess. Uh, weak as an excuse would be flimsy, maybe? Yes, a flimsy excuse sounds right. And the sound of music backdrop, that uh, the sound of music is set in the Alps, so there we go. If you gave 10%, you tithed in some, uh, in some religions, that's customary to tithe 10% of your income. Uh, many a Cook Islander is a Maori, right? Maori? Uh, I believe that is correct. 
And comprehension is uptake, quick on the uptake, understand things quickly. Um, tangle is what? I don't know. Tangle. A skine doesn't really seem like a tangle. Rackets are dins, loud noises. And hoped for responses to proposals are yeses, I suppose. Oh, I didn't look at this. Northern terminus of I-79. I don't know I-79. It'll be a highway in the United States, an interstate highway, which is what the I stands for, interstate. But uh, Erie, I suppose. I mean, Erie, Lake Erie, and then um, or towns named Erie that would, are also north because they're obviously Lake Erie as one of the Great Lakes is at the north of the contiguous United States. So I guess Erie is probably correct. Uh, Tangle is, or maybe it is a skine. One who's maybe too virtuous. Oh, goody something shoes. <laughs> Not a goody two shoes, but a goody some other number. Goody, maybe it's, maybe these aren't numbers. I, I think I got fixated on that because you only live, this looks like you could fit, you only live once, but I'm having actually, I'm having trouble fitting the appropriately formatted numbers, alternative numbers into these other uh, answers. Goody what shoes? That S is very surprising. It does look like this is doofuses, doesn't it? We'll just keep solving the puzzle and see what happens. I'm mystified. Very handsome as a bow. I don't know. Uh, hmm, not sure. If you're meeting all the job requirements, you're able, perhaps? An apt word hidden in Cleopatra's prop. That would be asp. That would be a good construction for a cryptic crossword hiding asp inside Cleopatra's prop. Um, it could be something like a uh, cause of death found in Cleopatra's prop. That would be a that would be a good sort of and lit clue, maybe call it, where the entire clue in a cryptic crossword also serves as the cryptic definition. So the cause of death would be the well, I don't know. I guess it's arguable. I'm sort of pulling this out of thin air at the moment, so it's maybe not the most perfectly tuned clue. But cause of death would be the definition of asp, and then found in would be the um, hidden word indicator, and then Cleopatra's prop would contain asp. And you could argue that because it references Cleopatra, the entire thing is one combined definition. Anyway, event for poets would be a poetry slam, perhaps. And a Peruvian cocktail is a, a Pisco Sour. I haven't had a Pisco Sour in years. It's a really nice cocktail. Um, and indeed, it is Peruvian. Randomized clinical trial. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. Oh, I should have caught onto this earlier. It's a double blind study. It's a blind blind study. We've doubled the word blind. So this is you only live live. It is you only live twice. That is that that was the name of the film. And we're putting the word live twice because that is how many times you only live in this 1967 James Bond film. So here we have I was going to say is it goody goody shoes or is it goody shoes shoes? And it's goody shoes shoes because it's not goody two as in two goodies. It's it's goody two shoes as in two shoes. So goody shoes shoes. <laughs> Sounds like a mobster name or something. Okay. A round figure abbreviation, probably an estimate. So a round figure is just sort of a, or sort of a silly way of saying a figure that's around the number in question. It's an estimate. Okay. Not once in poems would be uh, ne'er, the, the contraction of never. We're, con we're alighting the V. Um, so that would be spelled with, a, with an apostrophe if this were written language outside of a crossword. Surgical tool with an acronymic name. A laser, presumably. I don't remember what... Uh, laser is an acronym. It does... But I don't remember what the letters stand for. And I'm not going to try. <laughs> it probably starts with light. I don't know. Hosts is MCs, as in uh, the initialism MC, or I guess it's an acronym, actually, because we do pronounce it sort of as a word like this, MCs. Um, I guess it's both. Uh, anyway, MC, Master of Ceremonies, has become a word unto itself and a verb, meaning to host, to MC. Okay, very handsome as a bow. It was dreamy, right? There we go. Very handsome. He's dreamy. And something politicians and professors do. Orals? As in oral exams or oral defenses? Am I missing something there? Balance is... 
stasis? Oh, orate, sorry. Sorry, they orate. Politicians orate to voters or supporters, potentially, and professors orate to their students. There we go. Prefix with centric. It could be ethnocentric. I mean, there are so many. Centric is a, well, actually, ethno and centric are both common in turn, prefixes and suffixes. So why not put them together? And do the blank, do the math, some people might say. In other words, this should be self-evident if you just think about it and, and work it through in your head. Occupied. If something is occupied, it's in use. And if you someone does a pre-wash task, oh, sorts, as in sorts, um, for instance, whites from colored clothing. Okay. Uh, 11 or 12 say, but not 13 is an, an hour of the day, but that's not really true because I probably should have picked something that couldn't be used this way, like 25 or something, because 13 is a perfectly normal hour of the day if you're using 24 hour time. But anyway, uh, I understand what they're getting at there. Um, retreat is a den maybe? That doesn't seem right. Oh, I never I never finished off the top of the puzzle. In fact, I don't even think I've read these clues. Sorry about that. Uh, fly by night, question mark, is an owl, perhaps. Does a hit on somebody is kills them in uh, kind of mob terminology. So offs, does a hit on someone, offs them. Uh, not serious is frivolous, a person or a occupant, pastime or something. Blank of mandamus, writ, that looks like a legal term or something. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it means, but that's what that looks like to me. Quitting time for many would be five o'clock. Appropriate hour to quit. Uh, put back in. And pro who calls the shots. Hmm. What am I not seeing here? Pro who calls the shots and put back in. So put back in is what's, oh, it could be, um, oh, I see, I see both of these, sorry. So yes, put back in is stet, which is a, a proofreading term used by editors to mean uh, undo the deletion, put this, literally put this back in to the text. And then a vet is uh, a, a veterinarian, I suppose, Call, who calls the... I thought I saw this a moment ago. A pro. Is it a veteran or a veterinarian? It's got to be a veterinarian, right? An animal doctor who calls the shots. Why don't I see what this is? I don't know. Sorry, this is sort of embarrassing. I can't quite can't quite figure out what this is. Maybe it is, maybe it is a veteran. Um... I don't know. I'm going to move on. I got it through the crosses. That's all I all I need. Chicago trains are L's, elevated railways, L trains. Like most French toast and challah bread is eggy. So for different reasons, I guess challah bread being either eggs in it and then French toast is cooked in egg, fried in egg. Stick, for something to stick to something else, it, it could be glued, be glued to something else. Is that what that is? Not sure. Damn Yankees, Vixen. I've actually never seen Damn Yankees. I, I mean, I know it's a stage production, but I've never, I don't really know anything about it. But Lola looks likely, especially if that's glue. And then a retreat. Oh, it is a den after all. I was, I was thinking of it in that sense. A room in your home, perhaps, that is your retreat or your den, or maybe an animal's retreat or an animal's den. And then a crocheter's purchase is yarn. So you crochet, crochet yarn work. And there we go. So <laughs> the pro who calls the shot is the vet. And I am clearly not the pro who calls the shots about this answer, 22 across. Sorry about that. There's probably some blindingly obvious way to interpret this that I'm for some reason missing. I don't, I don't know why. I apologize. Anyway, let's, uh, let's quickly review this theme. <laughs> A very simple and fun theme that for some reason really confounded me until what? What was it? I don't... I don't remember if it was blind, blind. It was blind, blind, I think, that gave it to me. And uh, yes, yeah, so we had our James Bond film, You Only Live, Live, You Only Live Twice. Our 
a randomized clinical trial, our double blind study, and our goody two shoes, our goody shoes shoes. And I had thought this was going to be some kind of increasing, I thought it was going to be maybe one, two, three or something or something like that. Uh, no, they're all two, but they're all, they're all different. They're all different forms of two. So we had twice, we had double, and we had the number two itself. So a nice, a nice solid theme by Philip Wolf that is um, both very discernible, but also surprisingly subtle, at least in my case, in that I kind of understood what it was about very quickly. But for some reason, it took me a while to really dial in what to enter into the grid. I, I'm, I'm sure this would be drastically different for very for different people, depending on the order in which you solve the puzzle. For instance, for some reason, I just sort of skipped this area of the grid. But if I had continued solving in the normal order, I probably would have gotten you only live live before I even saw the beginnings of these other themes. So it, it was a funny quirk of the order in which I just happened to solve this puzzle that I ended up with that confusion. That's funny. It's just what kind of thing that happens solving the crossword. So that's that. Let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. I think there were there were some. Fortunately, I got these. <laughs> I screenshotted these from my phone. Oh, I guess my phone is a data connection, so that would have been fine anyway if I needed the internet. But anyway, what do we have? Dragon Traces explains pica, which I mispronounced as pica in yesterday's puzzle, whether the measure in printing or the eating disorder is pronounced with a long I, so pica. And um, I think Old Fooder pointed out that uh, the, the eating disorder is um, relating to people compulsively eating things that are not edible. They're not food. I mean, things that, I mean, things like iron nails, for instance, things that are very far from being food. And uh, Dragon Traces continues, a boater is a flat banded straw hat that is traditionally worn by American barbershop quartets, for example. I have no idea of the derivation. Old Fooder says, not sure, but doesn't it correspond to a gondolier's headwear? And it does, yes. I looked it up, and a boater hat does indeed derive from the short, flat, round hats worn by Venetian gondoliers. Uh, GTDP explains for the 22 down clue that whose answer was canoe, for anyone who didn't know, a portage is a stretch of an otherwise water-based journey where the vessel is carried over land. Both pronunciations used in the video are acceptable, which I think were portage and portage, with the more Frenchy sounding version more common outside the US. This is definitely the sort of thing I've seen before and just forgot. I've definitely seen, I've, I've read about portage in news stories and things dealing with uh, shipping and that kind of thing, but uh, I just couldn't bring it to mind for whatever reason. So thank you, GTDP. GTDP also continues with um, the answer about Auld Lang Syne, which was a go, and explains the phrase Auld Lang Syne is often literally translated as old, long, since Auld Lang Syne, or less literally something like days gone by or long, long ago. The tune is known in many places around the world as signifying some kind of ending, while Westerners usually associated with the end of the year. In Japan, the tune is often played in bars and department stores, etc., to signify the end of trading for the day. That's very funny. A very mundane usage as compared to its kind of elegiac usage in um, New Year's Eve or Scottish Hogmanay uh, context. World Be Free explains regarding 66 across, some tennis courts in places that have wet or snowy seasons are often covered with large tarp coverings that are inflated across several courts, forming a dome, so they may be used during those seasons. So that's why many indoor tennis courts have domes. Thank you for that. It wasn't, I don't think, I can't really picture that, so I guess I, yeah, I don't know, for whatever reason, I, I don't remember seeing that sort of thing. Um, Wimbledon is going on right now, so maybe I should... <laughs> Uh, I don't know if Wimbledon has domes, but I guess I could, I could try and find out. Pokemaniac33 points out a uh, misstatement of mine. The original novel on which Who Framed Roger Rabbit is based is not titled Who Killed Roger Rabbit, as you said, but instead Who Censored Roger Rabbit. You were close. That was a bit close. You're being a bit generous. But yes, indeed, it was Who Censored Rob Roger Rabbit, not Who Killed Roger Rabbit. Thank you for that uh, correction. And finally, this uh, relates to the theme. Cody says... A hat trick is three ice hockey goals or three successes 
more generally. Three rabbits, three hats, three magic tricks. A hat trick of hat tricks. That is a funny little uh, bit of tidiness in yesterday's three rabbits out of hats uh, theme. So thank you for pointing that out, Cody. That's very, you're very right. Three a hat trick of hat tricks. And there we have it. That was that for yesterday's clues. That's that for today's puzzle, today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back tomorrow for the Friday puzzle, our first of two themeless puzzles for the week. So do come back for that. I hope you do. And until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.